It's another absolutely glorious May morning here in Herefordshire. I've come down to the river to check on the lime bass that I've put in to rep this year and put a bit of oak bass in with it. I'm Sally Pointer and this is a hedge bothering video. Walking down to my usual spot I came across this really lovely alder tree full of mature cones. Now these are last years, they've been on there for a while, they're quite well weathered but it did remind me of a sample experiment I wanted to do, just seeing how well the colour of these transfers onto linen. So I'm going to pick some, take them home, and we'll try it out. First though, I need something to carry them home in. And this is perfect. Wherever you get water and farmland in Britain, you get burdock. I've made quite a few videos on the uses of burdock but what I want today is just one of the leaves, not too big, hello you'll do nicely, Ooh. and see how big that is compared to my hand? I'm just going to fold that up into a very makeshift little basket container cone thing and that will help me get my little stash of alder bag. Oh yeah, nothing complicated. I've just put a stick through that to hold it. That gives me a little space and when I'm done I can fold the top over as a lid, make a little parcel so I don't spill my treasure on the way back. Let's get picking. Now these are quite late in the season. Generally for dye or ink you'd pick alder a little bit earlier in the winter when they haven't been so weathered. So I honestly don't quite know what result I'm going to get today. Whoops, lost that one. I'm not being too careful picking them. Bits of twig are coming with it but that's fine because alder bark also has dye properties. In fact the alder tree overall is a really interesting plant. Because it grows next to water it has very water resistant wood so it's been used for things like clogs and stakes and all sorts of things but most parts of it will give dyes which do seem to be used in most parts of the world that have older and right across time so yeah today late season not necessarily going to have the best concentration but I'm just after a little bit of tonality in a linen project so let's give it a try that's Probably two really big handfuls of alder cones there, maybe three handfuls. It's going to be a small experiment. If it works, I can come back and get more, but there is no point picking more than I need for an experiment. Harvest sustainably. Pick a little bit, have fun trying it. If it's good, make a note of it for next time. So all I need to do now is fold this little flappy bit over the top, find another stick to pin it down to, and I shall get home. Right, so I'm home and that little parcel did just fine. I can now open it up. It's just a case of tearing it. I think we often forget that our earlier counterparts didn't always use formal baskets to carry things. Sometimes it really is just a, a leaf curled up. That did the trick very nicely. Sorry about the mess in my kitchen as usual. There's bits of bark everywhere and you know, all the usual clobber. So this isn't a huge amount. There's, as I said, a couple of good handfuls. I give them a bit of a scrunch, but I'm not even going to break them up. I could put them through the pestle and water. What I am going to do is pour a kettle of freshly boiled water over them. And oh, when the steam clears, come on steam. Can you already see there's some really good colour coming out of those? I'm going to let these soak pretty much all day it's 6 a.m at the moment so about 6 p.m so they've had the equivalent of overnight except I'm me it's back to front I'm going to put the fiber in then and we'll leave it overnight so the next thing I need to do is prepare the yarn that's going to go into it so this is the linen that I'm going to be using it's an unbleached linen it's a nice fine two-ply construction makes really good belts and braids this is the stuff I use in my belt making kits for the 13 strand braids. I want to see if this will take any colour at all from the older bark but I want to do it using methods that are plausible for very 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 early in humanity's exploration of dyes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash this extremely well first and I'm going to do it using some of the wood ash lye that I made a little while ago for my soap making experiments. There's a whole video on the lye if that is something that interests you. So in this pan I have got water 
and some of the wood ash lye. I haven't used exact quantities. I reckon that's probably a third lye to water. This is going in. I will give that a poke around with a stick. I'm going to bring it to the boil. I'm going to let it soak for a couple of hours, rinse it well, and it's a lovely sunny day. So I'm going to hang it out in the sunshine and maybe it'll bleach a little bit. That'd be quite nice. And that will prepare it until this evening when it goes in with the alder cones. That's had a good 10 minutes or so boiling in the lye solution and a rinse in plain water. Now I've spread it out on these lovely hot sunny flagstones to dry, trying to open out the skein as much as possible. I honestly don't know whether this is going to bleach much or not. It's quite a dark linen in its own right. But hey, let's give it a try, see what happens. Now this might be hard to see in this bright sunlight, but that is definitely one shade lighter which might seem odd because I'm aiming for a darker colour overall but often starting with a lighter colour yarn gives a better uptake of the dye. I've just strained the cones out into a white container so that hopefully we can get a sense of how rich a shade we've got off those bearing in mind that those are really late season well weathered well overwintered cones. So that's going back in the pan in a moment once I've disposed of the cones, although I'll put them by for another soak of water in case I need to top it up. The linen is going in. I'll also put in an extremely small skein of white wool just so that we've got a colour comparison on something that hasn't got any tone already to it. I'm going to bring it back up to the boil, turn it off, leave it uh, overnight and we'll see what it looks like in the morning. This has just gone in. This is the little bit of wool so it hasn't had a chance to fix yet but you can see that there's a nice sort of cinnamony colour going on there. Now most dyes need a mordant. A mordant is usually a metallic salt that helps stick the colour to the fibre. All the cones and in fact most tree dyes are tannin based and tannins generally fix quite well without needing an additional mordant. This makes it doubly good for my purposes because I'm trying to suggest something that could have been very, very achievable at a point before we're really doing a lot with the dyes that we're more familiar with and things like the Iron Age, but we're still just starting to see a little bit of colour and tonality coming in to woven fabrics. So onto the stove and the next time you see this will be tomorrow morning when it's had a really really good stew and has cooled down. What I want these yarns for is to work on some approximations of some very very early striped textiles. So this one is in Barber's excellent book Prehistoric Textiles. Anybody who hasn't got that it is still an absolute classic. Now, this is a late Neolithic cloth from Robenhausen in Switzerland, one of the pile dwelling villages, and it's a plain weave cloth with stripes. These aren't, as far as I'm aware, in dyed yarn, though. These are done by adding extra yarns to make a supplemental weft. You still get a lovely stripey effect. This one, on the other hand, though, tiny, tiny bit later, it's early Bronze Age linen. This is from this also truly splendid book thoroughly recommend it uh, really really useful one that covers most of the known finds at the point of publication right across Europe now this one has a lightish brown linen and these stripes are dyed or stained they're sort of olivey green as they survive today. I'm not certain that we know precisely what they were dyed with. I don't think analysis has been done on them, but I could be wrong there. Doesn't really matter. For my purposes, all I want to do is experiment with this idea that we're starting to get stripes in the late Neolithic, early Bronze Age, in otherwise plain weave, plain weave textiles. So that's what those yarns that we've dyed today are going to go in for, into. A piece of cloth that includes the undyed natural linen and a slightly different tone, just for a bit of contrast, for a bit of a stripe. 
I'm looking forward to playing with it. It's the next morning. I warmed this up a little bit while I was having my first cup of tea. So it's steaming just a bit. Let's have a look and see what we've got. So that is the wool. That's looking good. Question what it'll be like when it's rinsed or entangled up with it is the linen. That's looking very promising. You can never really tell though with, oh, it's quite hot. <laughs> you can never really tell with fibres until they're rinsed through. Now, normally linen is tough as anything when you rinse it. Wool, you don't really want to rinse at a temperature much different to the liquid it's just come out of. That helps avoid things like felting. So let's just hope this tap is it's fine, that's running warm. Lots of dye rinsing out. I'm not being too careful with my wool because it is just a sample skein. Rinse that until it runs clear. There's always a bit that gets tangled, isn't there? Right, come on. So, quite a nice light, what would you call that? Golden colour? I like that. Given how late in the season these cones are, I'm very happy with that. Um, the linen, well, that definitely does seem darker, doesn't it? Won't be able to tell for sure what the shade is like compared to the original until it's dry. So pop this on the line, come back to it in a couple of hours. Now that's dry, hopefully you can see that yes, it's very subtle, but that is definitely a darker, golder tone than the base linen. I'm not unhappy with that. That was a very, very quick experiment to see what colour I was getting with this overwintered material. I think what I might actually do is go back, pick some more alder cones and dye the entire thing again but even if I don't but what I want which is to make a belt with a very subtle dyed stripe in it that's going to work so I'm pleased with that I'm definitely going to do more with these older cones I think they'd be even better if I'd got to them earlier in the winter but it just goes to show that even in early spring when a lot of the classic dyes aren't ready there's plenty that we can be using right back down to the river to do a bit more picking. Happy hedge bothering. <laughs>